So, I like to talk about the two major dispositions that makes our prayers to be effective. If you look at our first reading, it speaks to us about the attitude of prayer that Abraham used. It tells us also about the disposition of God to listen to us and to be patient with us. If you look at the second reading, the second reading tells us something about the transformation and the changes of Sir Atin status and identity. If you look at the gospel, Jesus tells us about the major attitude and disposition that we must have in order to obtain something from God. I'm sure you know about the P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. But for me, I say, pray even after something happens. Now, what does prayer mean? Prayer means, in Catechism of the Catholic Church, prayer means the lifting up of our minds and heart. The mind, the mind is the intellect. The heart is the seat of emotion. Which means that prayer means a union, a communion, a fellowship and intimacy that we develop through communication. Because prayer means communication. St. Therese of the child Jesus, who happens to be my patron saint, the best of all the saints, she says that prayer is an interaction, mura chika chika, conversation between two friends. So if you want to be a prayerful person, you must understand who God is is God an enemy or is God your BFF? Now, this is why I want to talk about the two major dispositions. Don't worry, I will not speak long. I want to talk about the two major dispositions. We are reading, you know, the, the Lost Prayer, the Amanamin, the Amahannamo, the Pater Nosta, according to the account of St. Luke. We are not reading from Matthew, because if we are reading from Matthew, Matthew will say, our Father. But in this gospel, Jesus began by saying, Father. He did not use our, he uses Father. Now, the first disposition that makes our prayers effective is to understand who is God. Who is God to you? Who is God to me? Because many of us are thinking that God is Deus Otiosus. In Latin, Deus Otiosus means a withdrawn God. You know, the God that looks like a mental image, a mental figment. You know, a concept that is just there. Amen? So, we have to change our orientation about God. Who is God to you? If you look at the first reading, you understand that Abraham had a certain understanding about the identity of God. Look at where he started. Six, six questions. 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. God created the world in six days. And Abraham asked him for six times. Of course, you know the implication of that. That God is ready to recreate you. That God is ready to recreate me. That God is ready to transform us. Abraham had a certain understanding about the identity of God. Because sometimes, why our prayers are not answered is because we do not understand who God is. Abraham understood that God has absolute sovereignty. He has absolute dominion. He has absolute authority. He has absolute power. God is capable of doing everything and anything he wants to do. Do you believe that? Don't answer. But that is what Abraham believed. So Jesus wants us to know that we have access 
access to the Father. And that's why he began by saying, Father. If you look at Exodus chapter 33, you understand that the Jews were forbidden from calling the name of God. Because Moses said to God, I want to see your face. And God said to Moses, if you will see my face, Patai, you will die. So the Israelites were not allowed to mention the name of God because I think Baba, our mouth is sinful. Our mouth is not qualified to mention the sacred name of God. That's why the Jewish people use Yahweh and the Yahweh they use is Y H W. There's nothing like vowels. They use only consonants. They were not allowed to mention the name of God. So what Jesus did today is a revolution that this man, you are not supposed to mention his name. Now I give you access. You can call him your father because he is your father and you are his daughter. You are his son. So we have to change our orientation about God. Who is God to me? If I understand that God is merciful, as Jesus taught us, God is merciful, He is kind, we should learn to depend on Him. God is not a sadist. God is not a wicked man. God is not a person who is dancing when you are suffering. Because that's what we, many of us are thinking. When we get sick, we are thinking that God has abandoned us. But God does not abandon us. He will not. God's nature is eternal. We are the ones who walk away from God. But God is always here because being eternal means that God is unchangeable. When we commit sin, especially mortal sin, we are the ones who walk away from the presence of God. Our sin makes us absent in the presence of God. So God is always present, and He is loving, He is caring. Look at the first reading. I have heard people crying in Sodom and Gomorrah, let me go down, I am concerned. I am interested in your situation. So God is interested in your situation, God is interested in your relationship, God is interested in your health situation, God is interested in your negocio. God is interested in your integral life. That's what he said in the first reading. Let me go and see. So the first thing we must do in order to pray properly is to change our orientation about God. God is your friend. He's our father. He cares. He is our provider. The second thing is about ourselves. Most times, we don't pray very well because we look down on ourselves. And that's what St. Paul is doing in the second reading. St. Paul wants you to change your orientation about yourself. Because lahat mga tao, we have received vineyard. Everyone here is believed to be baptized. And on the font of baptism, we are transformed. Baptism gives us a new identity. That's why when you are baptized, you take a name. The name means you are given a new identity. And that new identity means you are no longer a slave to sin. But you have a new identity. You have a new status. So when you want to pray, you pray with confidence like Abraham. Don't pray, you know, being afraid. Will God hear me? Will he not hear me? I committed this sin yesterday. I said this yesterday. I'm a sinner. It's okay to recognize your sin, pero focus on the mercy and the love of God. So St. Paul wants us to change our orientation about ourselves. And that's what Jesus also wants us to do in the gospel. Many of us, when we start to pray, we give up. Don't give up. Keep on praying. God listens to our prayers. If God is not answering you, it is because God knows the perfect time to give you whatever you are praying for. At the perfect time, God will give you what you're looking for. Because God is beyond time. 
God sees the future from the past. He sees the, the past from the future. Because in God, the past, the present, and the future are all but one. If God knows that if he give you a culture, a car, that you are going to get into accident tomorrow, he will not answer your prayer that you're asking for a car. If God knows that if he allows your visa to be approved to go to US or to go to Europe, that you are going to get involved in plane crash, he will not approve that visa. You will cry and say, oh, God is wicked. He did not allow me to go to you know, vacation. But God was protecting you. So my dear sisters and brothers, Jesus wants us to persist. That's the difference between persistence and insistence. When we pray, we are expected to persist. To persist means what Abraham did. When you are asking God for something, keep an open mind. Allow the will of God to be done. Insistence means I want God to do it today. I want him to do it when I want him to do it according to my will, not according to his will. That's the difference, persistence and insistence. Let us ask the Lord to give us the grace to understand that prayer does not change God. Rather, prayer transforms us. If you look at the word prayer, the P for patience, R for respect, A for attentiveness, Y for yes to the will of God, not my will. And the E is for empathy. And the R is for receptiveness. A prayerful person must learn to receive and welcome other people. Amen.